Hi everyone, welcome to Roses and Rosé. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Melissa, uh, the Rose Bowl and Stadium, and I wanted to provide a little do-it-yourself flower arranging um, tutorial for you guys. Um, really simple, really easy, but can definitely make a really beautiful statement in your home. Definitely ready for Mother's Day. Might be something fun you can give all those awesome moms out there. I know everyone's working really hard right now. This is Lucia. She's gonna hang out with us today too. So we are on my couch in the living room with a coffee table in front of us. It's the perfect place for you to do some floral arranging. So figured we'd kind of show you from the, from the studio itself. Um, so a couple tools you want to get ready for yourself. Of course, your bucket of flowers. I've got a nice, just sort of tall, wide, sort of open mouth jar here, just a simple mason jar. Fill that up about two thirds of the way with water. Just typical scissors, nothing special. Easy scissors that you have at home. Of course, you can't do a flower arrangement without some rosé. So I've got some JNSQ here. This is my favorite rosé. I think mostly because it's beautiful rosé top. But I'm gonna get just a little glass of wine here for myself. You can do the same. And we'll get started. So, cheers everybody. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this lovely bucket of flowers. I'll talk through all the different things that we have in here. Everything here you can actually get very easily at your local grocery store. Trader Joe's has great, great value. Um, some really fun stuff. So don't be afraid to do something different than what we're doing today. It doesn't have to be these exact um, types of flowers or even colors. You can be creative and do exactly what you like, but I'm gonna show you just a couple little tricks of kind of fun ways that you can make these flowers pop. So we'll go through what we have right now. Right now we've got Hypericum berries, there's five stems. These definitely Trader Joe's. I have about seven stems of Alstroemeria. I decided to go with like a pink soft color just to kind of match with everything. We've got some lovely tulips. Now these guys are huge. They've opened up. We've got about five of them. You can tell their stems are heavy. So um, these are going to be really fun to kind of add in at the end. I just grabbed three stems of these um, mini carnations, which are a really bright orange. I think it's just going to kind of make everything pop. And then of course, most importantly, we have our red roses. So these are beautiful. Um, they're actually spray roses, which are fun because you get, you know, more than one bud for each stem. So this one has about four, some come with three. Um, a really fun way to kind of play with the idea of a red rose. And last but not least, this is just a typical blue eucalyptus. You can use any eucalyptus you find, even kind of like the long dangly silver dollars. These are fun, they're just gonna add a bunch of greenery to the base. So let's get started. I'll just kind of move some things out of the way so you can see here. Um, so this here is our, uh, our vase. The most important thing you wanna do is have fresh water. Keep it chilled, not extremely cold, not extremely warm, but just typical uh, room temperature water. Really important to change out this water every you know two or three days if you can. Um, if any of the leaves or just different pieces of the flower get into the water and start turning it that murky color, that's bacteria. And so that's gonna actually kill the flower. So if you keep your water clean uh, and fresh, your flowers will last longer. So we're gonna start with greenery. It's important to kind of build a base around the outside of the arrangement with some greens. Just kind of keeps everything hearty and fresh and gives you this nice canvas to build on top. So taking the eucalyptus, I have about a half a bunch here. Um, now, you know, each and every one is a little bit different. So you wanna just kind of find some, some long length ones so we can kind of have some length in the arrangement, um, but not too far. So I'm separating these out. Now you can see the leaves come all the way down to the bottom of the stem. And what you wanna do is you wanna peel off as much of those leaves that are gonna be inside the water as you can to um, not have any of that bacteria grow. So you can really just kind of strip these off, pull downward. The other thing really important to do is at the bottom of the stem, and we'll do this with our flowers, 
you want to cut at an angle, a really sharp angle. So I'm just going to do this here. Now, the reason for this is for one, you open up the stem so it's fresh and it's, it's ready to drink a lot of water. And then most importantly, when you set it down in the bowl or in your um, vase, if it's on an angle, it's once it hits the ground, it's going to keep that whole side open so that you can drink and it'll just keep drinking. So just kind of keeps it fresh. So you throw that guy in there and you can see I'm kind of, I'm not pushing him all the way down. He's going to kind of just do his own thing. And that is fine. You just let the flower tell itself where it's going to go. And we'll grab another one here, do a nice angle. These leaves might even go in. So now we're kind of, I know it's gonna hang down this way. So I'm just gonna let him do its thing and go that way. So you can see we're kind of building out and giving us, you know, a nice wide open arrangement here. So I'm cleaning him off, pretty clean here. Let's cut him at an angle. This one's pretty long, so I'm gonna push them all the way down so we have the length here. Um, and you'll see as we go, you know, these the whole shape of this will change. We'll just keep moving things around until it looks good. I'm gonna strip this off here and angled cut. I'm really keeping them almost as long as they were originally versus cutting them too short. And again, strip these guys. So let's get them all in there. Just go in all different directions. And here. This one will probably be able to go all the way down into the ground or into the base. Cool. So see, we've kind of got a big base going for ourselves. All right, step one, done. You can see how big this is gonna be. It's gonna be like this very big, sort of dramatic, a little bit breezy, airy, almost kind of like a wildflower look. So next, um, I like the hypericum berries are really good to use as a little bit of a greener, greenery element as well. So you can see how there's a lot of leaves on this. Um, personally, I think if you have too many leaves hanging off of the flowers, it's just going to start looking really busy. So take that off and we're really just gonna utilize this berry as a focal greenery for the top. So I take them all the way off. And this is your choice. If you want to have some of those greens on there, maybe in the top, you absolutely can. But now it's kind of a focal, almost flower. So this is gonna hit a little bit lower into the base. We're gonna have this greenery sort of sit in here with this other greenery. And I just, you know, just eyeball it. Just put that in there. Okay, that's probably a good length for right now. Throw him in there. You can see how he just pops out a little bit in between all the other greens. Let's do our other one here. These are good. You want to be pretty careful because as you're stripping these, you can kind of strip all the way down the stem. You want to just really only take off the... Um, the leaf and not so much a bunch of the stems. So this one is a little bit shorter. He's gonna be kind of tucked in there. Uh, you definitely want to, when you're thinking about placing these flowers in, all different varying heights. So if you have one flower that's say sitting here, you don't wanna put a flower just right next to it. You wanna make it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Um, that's just gonna be more of like an aesthetically pleasing look and just makes everything look a little bit more balanced. And then as we get into the flowers, we'll kind of talk about, you know, which flower to place where and why. So I'm gonna leave maybe these two greens on there, only because this one seems a little bit smaller. And I'll do this here. See how he's kind of popping out on that side. And this is our last one here. I'm actually going to make him pretty short. So, I mean, there's gonna be some, you know, some berries that maybe didn't make it all the way home with you guys. So I'm going to take them off because they were dangling. So that's very common. You know, it's, it's tough to keep these delicate flowers intact all the way home. So no problem. Just take those off. I'm going to make him a little bit shorter and maybe kind of pop him into the side, even shorter than that. 
So he's really just kind of popping out the side. See how you can see kind of right there? Just gives a different element. All right, so we've got our greens in. So now let's go to, once you get a good base of greens, it's good to go to the most important flower, which is of course our red roses. These are beautiful. They're really fun, they're lush. They're actually gonna get even bigger than this once they're cut and in, in water. So um, go ahead, remove those leaves just as before, cleans it up, makes it look a little bit, you know, a little more fresh. And this is the same way with the berries. We're just gonna kind of go in and see where it, what length feels best. Pop those guys in. Now that one's a little deep, so I think I'm actually gonna go a little bit higher with our other ones. Maybe move him over here since he was right next to the berries. And you can kind of make them pop out that way. I'm gonna go a little bit higher so they pop out and we can really see them in the arrangement. Just cleaning them off here. Again, angled cut, really helpful for them to drink. So let's put him just right in the middle there. See how he's popped out? We're gonna fill in so many other flowers that you won't even really see the base of those roses and the, and the green stems. You'll just see flowers kind of all over. This one here. Now what's important to think about when you're placing flowers, I know most of these are fairly much, pretty much the same size. There's about four roses on each one. They're all kind of the same size. But if you were to have maybe one set of roses, like say this one's only three, and this one's four, you'd want to keep the smaller flower higher up versus the lower flower a little bit lower. And the reason for that is that when you're looking at these aesthetically, you know, the, the one that's bigger just feels heavier naturally. And so you just naturally wanna see that at the bottom part of the arrangement, whereas the smaller flower feels lighter. So you just wanna keep that up high and it just aesthetically just works right. So we're going to keep this guy pretty low. I'm actually, I see this opening here and it kind of, you know, the separation from the greens. I want the rose to kind of pop out the side there. So we're going to go a little bit shorter. I may even have to cut it shorter than that, but let's see how that looks. So see how he's just kind of popping out there. He adds a little bit of red into the base of there while we still have this really tall one here. And let's take that, that number three. And we're gonna put him pretty high up because he's a little bit smaller. Let him stand out. So we're gonna go super high. Again, just any little pieces on the ends, guys, just take them right off before you get them into your flower arrangement. So let's put him maybe a little bit more angled on the side here. And now he's popping out right in between those berries, which I think looks kind of cool. Now again, we have the red down here. Maybe we put some red down here because there's a lot of green going on. So let's do that. And out of these two, I would say this one's gonna feel heavier just because it's clustered more. This one's a little bit more open, so I'd say that's lighter. And we're gonna hold on to our last one and not put that in until a little bit later so we can you know, put them in where it's most necessary. So this one, we're gonna do a little bit shorter because he's gonna go right onto the side. Let's see if that's short enough. Yeah. That looks great. So he's just kind of resting right there. So you can see just varying heights of the red just popping out all over and that's gonna show through. Okay, so let's go on. Again, let's keep one on the side. We're gonna go into our Alstromerias. Now these are awesome flowers, guys. These are common flowers. Just use at Trader Joe's at your local supermarket. They're super hardy. So they're going to last you two weeks minimum. Um, really, really beautiful. They open up, they flower. Um, they're a great flower. So again, we want to go in, take off a lot of these leaves. Sometimes the leaves are damaged. So I actually even take them all the way up off at the base as well. Um, sometimes they kind of look a little funky. So we take those off. Um, be careful as you're taking these off at the top though, because you know you don't wanna pull off the entire flower, of course. So this one kinda of has a funky cool curve. So I'm gonna to try to keep him long so we can see that curve. Let's just go ahead and kinda of do something like this. Let's pop him in so he's kinda of popping out the curve here. So he's just resting. He's gonna almost be a little filler um, of pink that sort of fills in that middle space. So we've got a lot of these, there's seven. So let's get all of these in here. And 
this little guy. There we go. Again, we'll do some tall, some low. Actually, he's too close there. I'm going to have him kind of come off the side here. So he ended up kind of sitting pretty close with our other one, but I like that. I think it's filling that out a lot. So maybe let's try to do one a little bit lower. Um, and it's fun. So again, my little guy broke right off. No problem at all. You just snap off the whole stem, take him off of there. This is going to be obviously a smaller grouping, but that's okay. We still love those. So this is more of a, a lighter piece. We'll keep him to go up higher since it's a little bit lighter. Um, I'm going to grab one that feels like it's sort of hanging out a little bit. If we get that on the edge of the vase, it'll just kind of naturally fall out of the vase and feel whimsical. So let's put him a little bit lower down in the vase, but on the side. All right, clean, clean, clean. So he looks pretty cool. Let's make that short about this. And I'm looking around, I'm looking around. There's a lot of greenery over here. So let's try to pop him in and then have the greenery sort of fall around him. And I like this because the berries ended up being just right above him. So I think that's kind of fun. Let's keep going. And let's see. I'll leave a couple of those, um, the green leaves on there. I think they actually look really hardy and pretty. So we're gonna keep those guys on there. And let's do a mid-range one. I'm seeing a little space here where we can probably pop one maybe right next to the roses. Give them some color together. Yeah, that's good there. So this is our taller one. Let's see how tall we can go. We're not looking too crazy. Um, maybe over here on this side, I'm seeing a little bit of, well, oh, see again, they pop right off, that's okay. We're gonna put him right here where there's some extras. And you just kind of, you, put, you force it into its spot. You just push them in there until they get there. They'll find their way, they'll find their home, and then you'll see as um, as they start to bloom, they just snuggle around each other and start to bloom around each other. And it feels like they were meant to be there. So I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter and try to fit him right in here. There we go. So he's kind of popping right out there. Again, let's clean this off. All right, I'm gonna go super short and have him come out right here. It's kind of holding things up. And I think it's safe to use all of them right now. We can move things around. What's really nice about doing things in a container this way is that you can pull them out and, and restart, especially since we're cleaning the um, the stems really well, they should be able to pull in and out of the vase without pulling out all of the other florals with it. And a nice little hole there. So just pink kind of in naturally in different areas. I noticed we still have one of our hypericums, which is great. Let's hold on to both of these on the side. Now let's move on to our tulips. So these guys are very, um, they're just going to be, they end up being very heavy, so they can hang a lot. So now that we have a lot of a base going on, we can place them somewhere where they're maybe resting and staying up on their own next to some flowers. Again, we're just going to take all these leaves off the base. These are a little bit interesting. They kind of come off, um, sort of seems like string cheese. <laughs> and you just clean them off. And you'll notice how this, typical, this particular type of tulip has this really fun, you know, kind of, garden feel where it's just a lot of tulip leaves but one fun thing that you can do with a tulip to kind of make it feel a little bit more open and, and um, a little almost like a different flower is you can reflex these leaves so or these petals so as you can see I'm just taking the petal and I'm just flipping it literally inside out um, and with the curve of the petal it naturally stays in that position and it starts to just turn into a completely different flower 
Now this one's a little bit tough to do because there's so many petals, but we can do, you know, maybe half of them. If you get just a normal tulip, which, you know, those are definitely common right now, you can do these and it looks like a completely different flower. It's really cool. You've got to check it out. Okay, so we've done almost all of these. Yeah, this actually worked. So you can see, it's almost like just like this big, huge, open, beautiful flower now. So we'll do a couple this way and we'll keep a couple natural. And I think it might be kind of fun. So let's do sort of middle of the road in terms of height. And I want to rest this somewhere where it's gonna have some support because he's already starting to kind of droop a lot for me. So as you can see, I, I kind of tucked him in there. So he had some support of the other flowers around. Um, and you know, we may not even use all of these just because they're quite large, but this one's beautiful and it's actually staying up pretty nicely. So we'll go ahead and clean him off. And let's do, let's try to go a little bit higher just because his neck is really strong, as you can see, and staying up really nicely. So if we can find a spot where maybe there's some lower flowers, we can show off the fact that there's, you know, this beautiful neck that's popping out and you can kind of see there. Yeah, okay. We'll do this one. Perfect. It's so beautiful, it's just opening so full. We're gonna go on the opposite side now. And he got it, he has a little bit of a curve, so we'll give him some support with another set of flowers over here. And tulips always look beautiful if they're sort of hanging. You can see one tulip is closed and the other tulip is open. I think that, that looks kind of fun. It's very different. Now I'm seeing a nice opening here. So I'm wondering, can we get one of these tulips, one of the smaller ones to sort of fit in that, in that pocket? Um, it'll be a shorter one, but I think we can do it. So we'll cut this a little shorter and we'll put him right in this pocket. Just push him all the way down. There, just filled right in. So there we go. This one, um, fortunately we lost him. So we're going to set that one aside, but that's okay. That's going to happen. They're real. They're fresh. Okay, now this is a fun little trick you can do. So when you buy these, you can see they're very closed. It's just a small little flower kind of popping out. You can actually open these up on your own and make them stand out a little bit stronger. So um, I like to have just one of these carnations pop out versus having a cluster of them popping out. I think it looks kind of interesting. So if you just break them off, you can use them individually. So I'm gonna pop these off. I'm gonna to try to keep one of these, maybe we'll have two together, really tall, and we'll have them come out. So, of course you clean off the base. Now when you take these carnations, slide this over a little bit, you can, there's little guard, um, sort of like the, the guard stem there, the little triangle pieces. If you grab one of those and you literally just pull it down and, and you pull down, Every other one of them, you're sort of ripping it down a little bit till it gets to the base. It opens up the space that they have. And then you just take your finger and you just open them up, just force those beautiful petals to kind of shine. And what's really nice is you can kind of see the inside of the carnation and it makes a much bigger flower. Carnations, just like Alstomeria, they're very strong. So it's, it's tough to really mess them up and break them. Um, to the point of no return, they're they're gonna stand strong. So even just by manipulating them this way, opening them up, you know, pushing the petals aside and away from each other, it'll stay this way and it'll stay healthy. So now we have a much bigger flower, which is kind of fun. So let's see if we can't get this one to be a little bit taller so it creates a pop in the arrangement. I'm gonna go ahead and have him this tall here. Why don't we plop that right here next to the lower rows. We're getting pretty full here. So you see how he just kind of pops out there and just added that bright orange pop of color. Just reminds me of spring, you know, really brings in some fun colors. 
So these two are starting to open a little bit on their own. Let's go ahead and do another two together. And let's open him up. Sometimes they might actually just open on their own even without having to pull down the side stones here. He's opened up. This one's already opening, which is great. Okay. Perfect. And we'll put him a little bit lower. Maybe on his side, we don't have too much color going on. I just put him right next to one of the berries. Kind of popping out there. And now these little ones, you can definitely use these just individually. We'll open these up. It's so fun because you can see how bright it is on the inside. So we'll do a cut again and put him right here on the side. He's hidden a little bit, so I'm gonna put him in front of this eucalyptus. So you can see there. This is a long one, so let's go ahead and use this one. And I think we're probably good with our orange carnations after that. Nice and open. We'll do a little snip. I'm gonna find a spot. We don't have too much the orange yet. I just placed him really nicely in there like that. Now we have two more left. So this is a great time to go through and say, oh, you know what? I'm missing a little bit of light green in this spot of the arrangement. Now we have a solution to plop that in there. And of course, even after it's done this way, if you want to move it around and change the way that you have certain flowers sitting next to each other, you absolutely can. It's also kind of fun to do some groupings. So maybe you have three of the roses sort of in one location together, another two on the other side. Um, you can kind of do whatever looks the best to you. That's all that really matters. So I noticed we didn't have any berries over here, so I'm gonna plop them right here next to our eucalyptus. So I kind of threw that right there. And our last rose, let's find the best spot for this one. Okay, let's see. I think I'm gonna just have him try to go really tall from the top. Let's see if we can make that work. So really tall, give him some length. Let's plop him in the top. Right next to your Alstrom area that's up there. See, I kind of have to jam a little bit. There, now he's sitting pretty with the Alstrom area. So there you go. Just created a little bit of height onto the arrangement. Um, we didn't use every single flower. You don't always have to use every flower. You should use the ones that um, you think look the best. Really airy, really open, um, beautiful arrangement. And another fun thing to do, grab a ribbon, twine, something, maybe a little bit of red, a little bit of pink or something like that. Tie a bow around the base and that'll just finish everything off for you. So I hope you had a great time. I hope you're able to learn a couple new tricks um, and fun things that you can do with your flower arrangements. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Hope you had a great time. Happy Mother's Day to all those mothers out there and enjoy. Mm -hmm.